The roaming ripoff, anyone traveling cross-border in Europe has experienced it. That balloon phone bill at the end of the trip with extra charges for using your mobile phone in other countries. The battle has taken years, but the European Parliament has finally won the success story of forcing telecom companies to scrap all roaming charges by June 2017. Hello and welcome to People First, the EPP Group's monthly program on issues with impact on people like you. Joining us to take a look back and a look forward at roaming is Paul Hubig. You're the Vice Coordinator for Industry Research and Energy with the EPP Group and a longtime campaigner against roaming. How does it feel now? By the time roaming ends in 2017, that'll have been about a decade since you started your fight. How does it feel? You know, that's politics. You have to fight step by step and you have to convince the people. And at least on European level, you have to find a solution with the council, with our national ministers. And so the commission is uh, really working hard uh, to get the internal market, but uh, step by step, we are getting it. Well, let's take a look at that step by step, how that happened. Let's take a look at our report. Scrapping roaming surcharges by 2017 is a major challenge to phone companies. They've relied on those charges for profit and investment in new technology to expand service. But proponents argue it's win-win, that Europeans who travel will save hundreds of euros a year on average, lower prices will stimulate more competition and phone use, expanding the market. That will mean more business for all telecoms, a bigger pie to share. How did we get from roaming charges of 50 cents a minute on average, much more for some consumers, to zero by 2017? It was a long political battle, seeking to balance the interests of consumers and the telecom industry. Paul Rubig of the EPP Group has been battling for years to scrap roaming charges. He attributes it in part to a love story of an Austrian student hit by hundreds of euros in roaming charges for a long call to her boyfriend when she was visiting the European Parliament. It took more than two hours because uh, she was in big love with him and uh, she was used it at home. Uh, the minute would cost approximately seven cents. As she got the bill, uh, it was uh, €3.60. Euro so from seven cents to €3.60 Euro and more than two hours talks, uh, the telecom invoice was much higher than the overall travel costs. So she blamed Europe for not being able to have an internal market. And there are a lot of other people hot and heavy about that, angry, hammered their phone bills. Do you have any other stories from back then like that? Yes, there are a lot of stories. Uh, we had, uh, in the very early beginning, uh, very high charges on this. Uh, so uh, one gigabyte uh, now you can buy for two euro. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we had, uh, across uh, Europe, a very different uh, price situation. This is what you saw back then. You thought, we have to do something about this. So you got together, you talked with the European Commission, the European Council, and you came up with a first step. In 2007, a first step. Let's take a look at our report. The regulation was exactly for three years uh, to keep it dynamic because after three years we thought that all problems are solved but uh, we learned that it uh, didn't happen so we got a roaming 2 directive. Okay well you got a roaming 2 directive but that was just a second step. What was holding up scrapping roaming charges? What was holding it back? Uh, first of all, uh, the telecom uh, companies made a huge profit on it. So the first step, uh, they had a turnover from 8 billion euro. With the first stop uh, step, they lost 50% to the consumers, to us. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the right step uh, to show that uh, misuse of the market uh, is not the game where European Union uh, can uh, play with it. There you go. That's where you saw that the first two rounds of legislation weren't enough. Here's our report from 2009. Paul Rubig said that there is good competition within member states with reasonable prices. But there is low competition between member states. I think transparency should be the number one topic. Uh, number two topic, of course, is uh, must carry principle, that uh, in any part of Europe you, could, you should be ready uh, to get your phone calls, uh, to get their transparent pricing, uh, and to be informed. Okay. So the mindset back then, let me see if I get this right, is you saw that transparency, as you said, was very important. Shed light on the issue so people see a reason to take action. Is that how you saw that? Exactly. We thought if we inform the people, if they go cross-border to another European country, telecoms have to show the tariff on your mobile phone uh, mainly with an SMS. Mm. So it worked pretty good. 
uh, of course, it's not too easy to see uh, what the difference between kilobyte, megabyte and gigabyte is, yeah. but it gave an indication. And so people get an awareness that if it's uh, more than a tome, to be careful and to cut down at uh, a certain limit. So you needed to explain a little bit better why this is happening so people see a reason to do something about it, but how much resistance did you face at that time? Where were you getting resistance at that time to wanting to cut roaming charges further? You know, in the roaming one, uh, the telecoms told us we have no legal base for it, and for them it was just uh, loving that politicians start to negotiate on European level. Uh, also, we got a claim at the European Court of uh, Justice, but we won for our, for our citizens. And so the telecoms, uh, step by step, uh, got the idea that it's not too bad, also for them, to create a 500 million people market uh, and they can sell to the 500 million consumers in Europe in a fair and good competition. And that was always our uh, target, uh, to have a, between the more than 100 telecoms a fair and transparent competition, because that's good for both sides. So you thought that this next step would be a significant one in 2012. You got another piece of roaming legislation, but even then you weren't sure that this was the, end of the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, this is what you told us back then, and you were making this argument about single market, very key. Now a roaming three directive, and I think we will also have a roaming four directive. Hopefully not, but we will see. ICT is very, information and communication technology, is very important for growth in Europe. So to free uh, the incumbents and to give to new entrants a, a chance to grow and for the investors to look for the company who is the best in the market and put the money there where the people love to make their phone calls and uh, their downloads, uh, that is uh, the real issue of internal market. Okay, so you got in 2012, you got this uh, Roaming 3, Roaming 3, which did cut rates, but then again, you knew that it wasn't the end of the story. How disappointed were you, or were you disappointed? No, I never was really disappointed because we always had the problem uh, that the council wanted to block uh, the overall legislation. So we came from the very early beginning with every negotiation a step uh, lower in the misuse rate. And so for the consumers, it got uh, cheaper and cheaper, and uh, at least it also triggered a new form of uh, competition. And I think that was the right step that we got with every step, with every roaming directive, uh, a lower misuse level. And you're saying we, this was a team you were working with, Angelica Niblo pushed through with you uh, Roaming 3 in 2012. Here's what she said about it then. Yeah. Uh, we have an objective, an overall objective, that is within the European Union, we should have a, a digital single market, meaning zero roaming charges at all. Well, didn't happen right away, but there, so there had to be a Roaming 4. A roaming 4, which was negotiated by Pilar del Castillo, del Castillo also on your team with the EPP group, to fully scrap roaming charges by July 2017. So it's been a long road since 2007. It's been a decade of reduction step by step while giving time for telecom companies to adjust to the new playing field. Here's what Mrs. Castillo had to say about it when, when they got passed. Hemos conseguido que los objetivos que nos habíamos eh, trazado desde el comienzo. Primero, la abolición de los sobrecostes a los que se enfrentan los consumidores al acceder a Internet o y tratar de comunicarse por teléfono cuando se encuentran fuera de su país. So, victory there. Battle won. What's the next battle? It was always EPP who brought the agenda onto the table and it's a real long-standing success for EPP like Angelica Nibla or Pilar de Castillo. And of course the next step is uh, that we want to have a real integrated uh, internal market. What does it mean? We need uh, for the 5G, for the next generation of telecoms, uh, we need uh, the harmonization of frequencies. Uh, it's very clear that only if we have uh, a, a harmonized uh, frequency policy, we can deliver the full success to the people. Uh, we need uh, the net neutrality. Uh, we have to show to the people that it's clear that an internal market is a benefit for everybody. And as you know, the EPP group will always fight to get this target. And that's what our wish for Christmas is, that 2018 we have it done. Paul Hubig, thank you very much for joining us on People First. 
Find out more about the activities of the largest political force in Parliament by checking eppgroup.eu. Until next time, thanks for watching.